Okay, so um, we're going to talk about Veeam availability for AWS now and what we can do around protecting the actual instances and services that are being consumed within the AWS cloud platform. So first of all, what is Veeam availability for AWS? Well, it's essentially a solution that combines two products in Veeam's portfolios. So N2WS backup and recovery and the Veeam backup and replication instant management. So Michael's going to kind of follow on from this as well with a bit of a demo around uh, the external repository feature within Veeam backup and replication. And essentially what we do is we take the N2WS backup and recovery, we deploy that in AWS, which allows us to manage all the instances, and then using the external repository feature in Veeam backup and replication, we're able then to manage those backups that we've got in AWS and manipulate them for on-prem as well. So first of all, what's N2WS? Well, N2WS was a company that Veeam actually acquired in um, early 2018, last year. I'm losing track of what year it is now. I'm getting old. And essentially, it was founded in 2014 out of Israel. Um, it's one of the leading solutions being sold on Amazon's marketplace. It's real easy. It, when you use Amazon's marketplace, you kind of just go in, click, and then all of a sudden you get a big massive charge on your, your credit card. And then it, they started partnering with Veeam just in a partnership of being able to protect instances and being able to sell through Veeam as well. And then Veeam decided to acquire the technology in 2018. So at a high level, what's it do? Well, obviously, AWS provides a lot of capabilities around its APIs, its CLIs. We have things like um, EBS snapshots, regions, and availability zones. But they don't have a lot of the granular capabilities that you need to protect production-like workloads. So when you think about a lot of the capabilities in AWS, being able to write scripts and take snapshots, when you're protecting all your production data for that, it gets quite expensive storing them all as snapshots. So Veeam brings along these capabilities about being able to archive off to S3. Um, one of the, the core use cases as well is things like VPC backups. So actually protecting all the configuration options that you put into your virtual private clouds, your VPC. So things like subnets, security groups, all those kind of things. When you're building out a large production environment in AWS, losing that or somebody going in and deleting a lot of security groups can become problematic. So being able to restore those, clone those to different regions as well is, is a big use case. And then things like file level recovery as well, and also application consistent and application aware backups, which you can do through agents through N2WS as well. We also do things like uh, cross account disaster recovery. So in AWS, accounts are typically um, defined as security boundaries. So if you think about um, somebody like Anthony did before where he accidentally posts all his secret access keys on GitHub and then somebody comes along and starts deleting everything. You know, even, <laughs> even when you've got all that backed up, if somebody has access to the root account or the account in AWS, it's pretty easy to go and destroy things. There's, there's lots of history of certain companies that, are, that have kind of been exploited that way. So cross-account disaster recovery is critical when you're thinking about public cloud security. So with N2WS, you're able to actually take, copy the instances, replicate them over to other accounts, and then fail over and bring them up straight away in a, in a disaster recovery environment across accounts. So it brings in those isolated security boundaries as well. I have a question. How much about the underlying infrastructure do you know um, in terms of turning that back up into the code to, to restore it. So I just want the code. I want to see what was. I'm, I come into a new organization. Um, I, the last person didn't build things through code. It didn't wasn't done too well. Can I back it up and then transpose that back into the automation code required to rebuild my cloud? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. So if you can do it through the AWS APIs already, then from a restore perspective, you can. N2WS as well also provides like a full um, RESTful API. So you'd be able to build that into the code as well. So you can then actually do the restores, transfer them to AMIs, and then go and deploy them how you want, stuff like that. Yeah, so there's the ability as well to use CloudFormation templates within N2W, leveraging those APIs. So. It's not just EC2 instances as well that we back up. Um, 
it's also able to back up things like uh, Anima, uh, Amino, I'll try that one again, Amazon Dynamo DB, um, Oracle as well, which is obviously Amazon's favorite friend at the moment, uh, MySQL, all those kind of database services that are running in AWS <laughs> as well, we can back up and we can restore them. And then we take the instances, we convert them to snapshots, as I say, and then we can offload those out to, to Amazon S3. So at a high level, and I'm going to show you in a minute a, a demo of this, but at a high level, what we do is basically we deploy a backup and recovery appliance in, in AWS. That then goes through and calls all the APIs to take snapshots of everything that you want to back up, whether it's the instances or the database services. And then essentially, once we've got those snapshots in place, we can then copy those snapshots and offload them to S3. And we create what we call an OVBK. So as Michael was talking earlier about the VBKs and, and how uh, Veeam essentially creates those from a portability perspective, we create an OVBK, which Veeam Backup and Replication is able to read on-prem or wherever you've got it deployed and manage those as, as a particular um, backup file. So what this allows us to do then is once we've copied all our backups to S3, of course it lowers our, our consumption costs because we're not having lots of large snapshots stored on EBS. We can then bring those and manipulate them and leverage like cloud mobility so we can actually do the restores out to different platforms. So you can, if you think about your running, say, like the web server that Michael showed in, in his previous demo, you've got that running in AWS. And for whatever reason, you need to bring that on-prem and go deploy it on vSphere. Well, it's really easy through the external repository feature in VBR to actually bring that and then go and deploy it to vSphere. We can deploy it to Hyper-V, Nutanix. We can even deploy it out to, to Azure or something like that. So with that cloud mobility feature set as well, we can take all our instances that are running in, in AWS and, and move those around. Now, obviously, there's, there's certain things like egress charges that you, you might want to consider if you're moving pretty much your whole EC2 production environment to vSphere or something. The, but essentially, we have the capabilities to do that, yeah. So um, that cloud mobility, is that strictly for EC2 instances? Or I, the other things that you mentioned, the databases, uh, DynamoDB. Uh, I mean, yeah. obviously, DynamoDB is somewhat proprietary. Yeah, but so in, in that perspective, yeah, it's purely for the EC2 instances. So okay. um, today, we aren't able to take like a, a DynamoDB backup and then go and throw that on-prem because essentially it's not what supported target, on, on that right. platform. Yeah, so um, I'm guessing when you look at what VMware's announced, and mm -hmm. this is just me theorizing, longer term, it will be easier when vSphere is supporting things like the underlying platform for, for RDS databases, that kind of thing. When you look at what they're announcing with Amazon, when they do that, we'll then be able to tie into that long term. But obviously that's not something we can do today or any of the supported hypervisor platforms can do today either. So we're limited by the hypervisors really. Right. So okay. Cool. Good question. So now I'm going to try the demo gods and hopefully I can figure out how to use Anthony's laptop. Right. So what I'm going to show you now is just the N2WS interface. So first of all, if you remember back to Michael's demo, what Michael showed you was he actually restored an instance out to AWS and he put a tag on it. So he defined a tag and if we look in this policies, what we essentially have is um, on here we have all the policies defined for where we want to run our backups. And with N2WS, as I mentioned, we support multiple accounts as well. So what I actually have here is you'll see um, I've kind of set this up as in I'm a service provider providing managed service provider capability. So you'll see like there's actually two company names here. One's called V, funnily enough, and one's called Virtualytics, which is just like some random dream company that I have in the UK. And essentially what Michael did was he uploaded, he restored that instance out to AWS, put that tag on it of Ohio Veeam, which is this policy name here, which is just a weekly backup that runs that I've set up for the region in Ohio. Now, if I click on backup targets, what we can see is the instance name that Michael actually restored, 
while Anthony's been talking, we've had N2WS run a tag scan against all the instances in those accounts across the regions, and it's picked that instance up, and it's actually gone and just added it to our backup policies. So real simple, real quick. Um, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to... Um, what we also have is, obviously, as I mentioned, the ability to copy to S3. So we can just enable it, and then we can specify what S3 repositories we want. So if I show you um, the tag scans, what actually happens is if we look at the logs, we can see that what it does is it goes through and scans all the regions for the accounts that we've set up. And we can define how often we have that. I've got it obviously running at the minimum, which is an hour, to obviously make sure all our demos work. But typically, you would have that like 6, 12 hours. You know, people aren't typically restoring instances every hour and having to, to add them. But we can see as well that it actually goes into more detail. So we can see here that we've got some errors that I've deliberately made. Um, and what these are saying is it spotted some tagged instances, but the policy doesn't exist. So as a backup administrator, we can see that, and we can look at these instances and say, right, what, what's going on here? Why, why haven't we got them? And then, of course, we keep going through, and we see that London, um, I won't make any Brexit jokes about it still being in the EU, but um, unfortunately it is. And we go through all these different regions, and we can see that, as well, that some of our instances is just letting us know that they're already in policy. As I mentioned about the VPCs as well, we can turn on that we want to capture our e VPC environments. And we can see as well by looking in the logs what's going on. So it's searching for changes. So it, we can see here that it's looking at this VPC. It changed that based on the fact that I updated some security groups. And it goes through again and looks at all those different accounts. So it gives us a lot of those kind of granular capabilities. Now, if we go back to the policies, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a backup straight away. And if we go back here and we do a refresh, we can see that that backup started. Now, while that's going on, I'm just going to open this log and show you, because we have to copy the data to S3, I've defined it to copy the data to S3, that takes around about 10 minutes. So initially what it'll do is it'll take a snapshot, it'll create a snapshot and save that on the EBS platform. Then we spin up a proxy, a, a worker node as we call it in N2WS, and then that essentially breaks that snapshot down and copies the data into S3 and creates that proprietary OVBK format that I showed. So we can see here though that looking at one that I made earlier that once it's done the snapshot, you can see how quick it is. It's like a minute to do the snapshot. It then goes off and starts doing the, the copy to the S3 repository. David, um, just on that point around mounting the S3, um, the, the snapshots, yeah. do you support encrypted EBS volumes? Uh, not today. Okay. Um, it's something that we're, we're currently working on. Um, just tagging off of that for a moment, um, some of the recoveries that were shown before were restoring an EC2 instance from on-premises mm -hmm. data. Can you restore to an EBS encrypted volume? I believe we can, can't we? Yeah. yeah so. Okay. Yes. So you could do that. Yeah. But if it's already encrypted in on the AWS side, you we can't back that up, or we can back it up if it's in the AWS. Yeah, Michael. Michael will look quickly check. Okay. Good question. So what I'm going to show you now is we can see that. On here, our backup's already been successful, so that's the snapshot backup. Um, you know, no surprise that it's pretty quick. You know, it's what AWS does all day long. And now we've initialized the S3 copy. So if we go over to here and we look at Ohio, and I just do a quick refresh, what we can actually see down here is we have a worker machine that's just spun up, and we can define the instant types of these as well. So based on what, on, on how much data you're offloading as well. And what I'm going to actually do is just terminate this instance here that Michael restored earlier. So essentially, we're just killing that. We're deleting it. So it, it's not going to exist anymore. But because we've already done a backup, what we can actually do is we can very quickly recover that. So just by picking the defaults, we can 
it'll just deploy it straight back into the region that it did the backup from. So if I actually click the right button, go back there, recover, and we're just going to say, so we have the ability to recover the instance, or we can actually just recover the volume only as well. So we'll just say we want to recover the instance. Before you go on, are those the only options you have at that point for recovery? I mean, could I, for example, on this one say, I don't want that guy to delete it again, turn on termination protection? Or yeah, am I going to so, get exactly the same instance yeah, that, so I, we can, that I deleted? We can actually go into a lot more of the advanced settings. So we can actually, like, we can recover um, from different regions as well, different S3s. We have a lot of the advanced options, so we can pick what VPCs we want, what security groups we want to add them to, what we can change the instance type, we can change the sh shutdown behavior, what we want to do with APIs. So there's a lot of advanced options there as well. So uh, I just it, it, That's the exclusive list. I didn't see what used to be called user data, the ability to... The user data? Yeah, the ability to run a script or uh, a... Yeah, uh, so... Send it um, uh, base 64 encoded scripts data. Yeah, no, we don't have those built into this. Okay. So you can do it through the APIs, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, just a question on restoring to the VPC there. Yeah. Uh, a different VPC, and also touching on the restore to AWS options we saw earlier. Do you have the capability to change the IP address of the restored VM? Yeah, so when we deploy it um, to different subnets, we can, we can do all the configurations through those advanced options. So both in the N2WS product and in restore to AWS that we saw earlier? Yeah, so through N2WS doing the restores, we can do that, and you can do that through um, the, the Veeam backup and re re okay. replication. I keep getting replication and recovery because we just to make, make my tongue tying easier. I, I, so if we just, just to follow up on Chris's question, because yeah. it's very interesting, were you asking about um, reusing an ENI that exists in the VPC, or were you uh, uh, no. talking about assigning a different private or public IP address? Private IP. Another, a different private no, IP address. No, the same, re, re IPing it. Because uh, essentially, earlier, if we're doing um, a restore to cloud um, in, in Michael's earlier demo, um, you're not going to have the same, it's unlikely you've got the same IP range um, in AWS. So you need to initiate a script yeah. or something so as you're restoring that VM to change the IP address. Yeah. Yeah, but if you had a secondary ENI, for example, that you'd attached manually to the instance, you would be able to reattach that. Um, you're talking about the primary IP address. Yeah, yeah, because if you're attaching the ENI, you're adding a secondary NIC, so that's going Correct. to come up as completely separate. So it's still going to have the, the, the initial NIC, which may have various configurations yeah. and things attached. Exactly. It's going to have the wrong IP address. Right, let's move on. Um, so what we can see here is that really quickly, we've restored that instance. Obviously, we restored it from the, the EBS snapshot. It's up, it's running. We can see the one I terminated, and then we can see it again that it's running as well. So really quickly, we were able to recover into the same region. As I mentioned, we can kind of um, we can restore from object storage, S3. We can restore to all the different regions, all those kind of capabilities. I'm going to just jump in. So yep. on the VBR side of things, um, so we have external repository, we add that in, we go and add the S3 repository, and you'll see here that we've got some of those machines. If we right click on there, we've got the ability to either restore guest files, restore back to EC2. We're probably going to use CPM to do that because that's the nature of it. But if we wanted to move that workload from what's running in an EC2 instance, we can run through that restore to Microsoft Azure at that point as well. And we can go through, you can see that within the S3 bucket. These are created backups via N2W that have been tiered into their S3 repository. You can see what they look like from that and how many restore points we have. 